to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. This is the famous Lal Digi or the Red Tank located in the heart of Kolkata. And in its water, you can see the reflection of the city's past. These buildings are an important legacy of the country's colonial heritage. Popularly referred to as Office Para, the Dalhousie Square has been the commercial and political centre of the city for over 200 years. It was named after Lord Dalhousie, the former Governor General of India. When Kolkata became the capital of the British Empire in 1772, this is where all the action happened. Many stately buildings were constructed to accommodate the officials and their offices. For example, the northern side of the square is dominated by a massive red brick structure of the writer's building. It housed the junior clerks or the writers of the East India Company. On the western side stands the general post office. It was built in classical style with an imposing high domed roof and tall Corinthian columns. Next to it lie the Royal Insurance Building, the headquarters of the Eastern Railway and the head office of the Kolkata Port Trust. India's first parish church, St. John's, is also located here. The church's exterior is modelled after the Gibbs, St. Martin's in the Fields in London's Trafalgar Square. Its interiors have beautiful stained glass windows and paintings as well as the mausoleum of Job Carnock, the man who is widely regarded as the founder of Kolkata. The buildings of the Treasury Office, the Telegraph Office, the Great Eastern Hotel and Kolkata Town Hall can also be found here. To the south of the square is the government office where the Viceroy and the Governor General of India resided. Today we know it as the Raj Bhavan, the official residence of the Governor of West Bengal. However, the Dalhousie Square, which was one of the most bustling part of the town, fell out of the picture when the capital was moved to Delhi in 1911. Over time, the grand buildings deteriorated and some were even demolished. But post-independence, the square got a new lease of life. It was renamed to BBD Bag after three freedom fighters, Binoy, Badal and Dinesh. They had stormed the writer's building and shot the British Inspector General of Prisons, N.S. Simpson. Many of the British buildings were taken over by the state, which governed out of its rooms. Many corporations too established their headquarters here, giving it the face of a business center. Recently, the locals have also taken note of the BBD Bag's historical importance and campaigned to give its buildings a heritage status. Public and private bodies showed their support by funding the restoration and revitalization of the area. The Dalhousie Square, a scene of Kolkata's colonial architecture, tells the story of the grandeur and might of the British Empire, built and maintained at the cost of the natives. It is also a reminder that the reins are back in our hands and now it is up to us to choose whether we want to see these buildings crumble or preserve them and use it to our benefit. <laughs>